The ABA and defunct teams are now officially dead, becoming ghosts of the game. But what is a ghost? Why does the symbolism of the supernatural always pop up in subtle stories, even via the medium of professional sports? The spirits of St. Louis had the ultimate last laugh. The Sylvans distributed hats to anybody and everyone who wanted to have them. And those hats basically said something very clear. They said spirits of St. Louis in the front, on the back, in spirit, in perpetuity. The spirit of St. Louis will live on forever. You can feel its presence, but can't touch it. You know it's there, but can't see it. The fifth element on our planet, after earth, water, air, and fire, is spirit. The force of intangibility that guides us all from a realm not contained in our own. Spirit can also produce spirits, which are supernatural beings or essence. The most supernatural sports contract in history manifested out of the merger between the ABA and NBA in 1976. While the National Basketball Association absorbed all but four ABA teams, one of the odd teams out, the spirits of St. Louis, set to become the lingering ghost for the growing league in perpetuity for forever. The Spirits of St. Louis were a basketball franchise based in St. Louis that played in the American Basketball Association ABA from 1974 to 1976. The Spirits were a colorful team featuring a number of players, both on and off the court, who were fairly successful in their basketball careers. Future NBA Hall of Famer Moses Malone was acquired during their second and final season. Maurice Lucas became an NBA All-Star with the Portland Trailblazers. Former Boston Celtics six-man Don Chaney, future Celtics head coach ML Carr, and Ron Boone, who held the record for consecutive games played in pro basketball for many years. But one of the most colorful players on the team was forward Marvin Barnes. Marvin Barnes and the Spirits of St. Louis existed for only two short years. But during that time, they transformed both pro basketball and the business of pro sports. The Spirits are the NBA's 31st team. Because of that incredible TV rights deal and the notorious escapades of Marvin Barnes, I think the Spirits may be more relevant today than when the ABA folded 40 years ago. Goodbye, the jumper! If you want to take a single franchise that captured everything, just about everything, that was crazy about the ABA. Look no further than the spirits of St. Louis. David said, no, we're not going to get out of here unless we make a deal. I had no idea that they were going to insist upon four teams. We thought that we, we thought it would be six. I did. The four teams from the ABA that went into the NBA were the Denver Nuggets, the Indiana Pacers, the San Antonio Spurs, and the New York Nets. The critics all say, it was because of Marvin's erratic play and his irresponsibility and the rumors of his drug use that the NBA did not want the spirits included in the merger. Barnes was not the reason why the NBA owners didn't want a franchise there. They'd had a very successful NBA team in St. Louis. They'd won a world championship. Bob Pettit was a star on that team, but they couldn't make it, and they moved to Atlanta. The NBA owners did not want a team back in St. Louis. They didn't think St. Louis was ready for NBA play. Uh, they didn't think they were financially stable. The ABA offered to purchase the remaining two franchises for $3 million each. John Brown, the owner of the Colonels, negotiated and took a deal of $3.3 million. The Silner brothers and their attorney, however, turned down the offer. They were unhappy about not being included in the NBA merger. After all, they had moved the team to a bigger market for the specific purpose of increasing their chances of getting to the NBA. Keep this thought in mind of how disgruntled the Silner brothers were when they got the short end of the stick once we symbolically summarize the spirit. Part of their thought was, look, this keeps us connected to the league. This is our entry point. Maybe through this connection, they haven't closed the door on us. Maybe through this, we'll get a franchise. We're gonna have kind of a vested interest in this situation so that perhaps one day we're gonna come into the NBA. Because that was the dream of these guys. I think 
if you had said to the Sonas, you can have this deal going forward or you can have a franchise, they would have taken the franchise. At the time, it made logical sense considering the fact that basketball-related television viewership and revenue was tiny compared to what it is today. Even the NBA playoffs were not broadcasted live. Due to this lucrative deal, ABA teams got no NBA TV money for the first three years. At first, giving the Silna's annual payment of four-sevenths of the television revenue that the other NBA franchises received did not seem like a heavy cost. In 1980, the first year of the deal, it yielded a modest revenue of $500 22,000 as the NBA struggled with spotty attendance in weak TV ratings. This would represent roughly 2% of the entire league's television revenue. In 1982, after cashing in a couple checks, the Silnas came close to accepting a new buyout. The NBA offered them $5 million over eight years, but they once again countered with a demand of $8 million over five. The league hesitated at that number, and so the Silnas would continue to cash in. This is where things get scary and the spirits of St. Louis become a monetary nightmare for the NBA due to their perpetuity payments. Even after death, some spirits remain tethered to this world due to unfinished business. Best-selling, award-winning author and intuitive medium Melissa Alvarez has said, There are souls who never really transition but hang around on the earthly plane due to feeling they need to watch over someone or they need to help others. There are cases where the spirit cannot let go of the negative emotions either surrounding their death or their life. These spirits fail to release from this world and cling to it. This is a matter of exerting free will, and those spirits remain tethered to this world until they are ready to leave. By the 1980s and 90s, the league began to explode in popularity with the emergence of stars like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Finally, when Michael Jordan, his heirness himself, arrived on the scene in 1984, the NBA was headed in the right direction. Cable television increased in popularity as a growing number of Americans had disposable income and barriers to technology began to decrease. And although the former ABA owners had numerously attempted to buy out the contract twice in the past with the brothers never considering either offer, this time was different. Eventually, in January of 2014, after 40 years and paying out nearly a third of a billion dollars, the brothers in the league finally came to an agreement in which the NBA reportedly paid them an additional $500 million, plus a small fixed annual amount to get out of the original agreement. The deal cut by the brothers and the incredible amount of revenue it has produced over the years has itself become legendary. Not only will it forever be a part of NBA history, but it will also go down as one of the greatest sports deals ever made.